Good morning, everyone. My name is John. I have been working in the field of engineering for over 35 years, and I have pretty much done everything there is to do under the sun on this planet, including water and wastewater treatment, uh, along with residential construction, structural, any kind of civil, commercial, residential. I even worked for the EPA for several years. I have controlled all of Central Florida's processing and we will say municipal uh, processing uh, like power plants, uh, paint facilities, uh, any kind of batch plant. So I have a real strong hands-on uh, for just about anything, including air pollution devices, such as TOMs, PM 2.5s, calibrations. I can tell you just about anything there is to tell when it comes to engineering and how to make money in engineering. And of course, like anything else, I'll start with the very beginning. And what is at the very beginning? Well, the very beginning is you own a company. Depending on the company that you own will depend on the type of work you're soliciting for. But just for argument's sake, let's say I'm just a, a regular company and I need to have some work done. Whether it's structural analysis, um, site plan development, uh, or just uh, plans in general. So the very first thing you'd want to do is put out one of these. And you can put this anywhere. You can put a request for qualifications out on the uh, newspaper. You can put it on a bulletin somewhere. Send out um, some kind of uh, uh, notice to the cities, the planning and zoning. Uh, post it some, you know, anywhere. So the notice to professional engineering and consultants, um, and it's a qu request for qualifications, and there's a lot of stuff that goes with it. You have to have certain uh, professional licenses. So this video is about making money in engineering, okay? If you put out a request for qualifications, it means you are potentially asking for a proposal, a request for proposal, RFP they call it. You're an engineering company or a company that just wants to hire engineers. So that's your very first step in doing any kind of engineering whatsoever. So I will continue on this note because of my vast experience and knowledge of airport work, commercial work, residential work, I will tell you that now I'm just going to skip through to the construction aspect of a set of plans that has already been established right here. A set of plans that have already been established. All of the legwork, the heavy lifting has been done. You have approval from municipalities. You have calculations for everything that you're doing. You have um, a company that has employees. You, you have everything there is to, to have. And I will uh, mention some of these things because your permits, uh, very important, very important. You have to have things like the water management districts, which handles the environmental review uh, ERP, okay? Um, here we have several in the state of Florida. You have South Florida Water Management District, you have St. John's. Um, so point is, there's a million different things that have to be done. Um, NPDES with FDEP, the wastewater, uh, you know, has to be calculated and it has to be approved. So you have um, um, sent everything to the uh, you know entity that is in control of the project. If it's in the city boundaries, if it's in the county boundary, then you have to uh, you know find out what their 
permit requirements are. Um, and it just goes on and on. So all this, all this has to be done before um, the, and of course you've got everything else that goes with it, like your um, site drainage, uh, berms, uh, seasonal high uh, elevations, um, retention pond, uh, you know, calculations. You have, um, you know, so you send a set of plans into the uh, zoning department. They, they, you know, they, well, it's for commercial plans. It's one type of set of plans. If it's residential, it's another set of plans. Um, and I will get all in, into all of this and I can describe all of this to you in detail should you need any help whatsoever in getting something done um, even as far as getting permit licenses for uh, commercial uh, plans such as uh, maybe you need to have a lift station design you have to have a CAD conservation area determination design uh, and maybe you need to go by uh, the um, for your establishment, if it's a restaurant, a commercial you know, building like a, I'm going to say a Ruby Tuesdays or um, anything like a Panera's or something like that, then you have to have your um, uh, alcoholic beverage license and permits from planning, uh, application for dumpsters, uh, landlord agreements, if there is such a thing, you know, you might have to have those ready to go. Uh, storm sewers, I think I mentioned, sanitary sewer, sewers, but everything has to go through the county uh, and the county's requirements are in several different departments. You have zoning, you have engineering, you have fire marshal, utilities, environmental protection, planning, health and commercial. This is all ha has already been done and approved when you get one of these. This is your plans, okay? Now, let's say you're a construction company. I'll make this simple. This is one video that I'm gonna make on residential construction processes only. And you have your set of plans. They have been approved by the city. They have been approved by the, by the county. Um, it's ready to go. So, you know, it's done by the Florida Building, building Codes. Um, all of the trusses have been signed, steel, sealed with uh, calculations uh, and approved. Everything has to be approved. That's why you have so many different uh, municipalities, city, uh, and everything like that to approve a set of plans like this. This is the end result of all that work, putting out a proposal, having a company, and getting everything um, to the point where I am about to show you probably the simplest and easiest uh, structured method of building a residential home that I have ever run into. And I made sure that I saved a copy of this when I worked for companies like uh, Morrison Homes, Park Square, and several other companies up north. So, the very first thing that you should know is that everything on this planet is done by certain building codes, okay? Anything that we have done, unless it's done illegally, inappropriately, and against regulations, it, it follows what's called a uniform filing code, a CSI code, okay? This CSI code is what these plans have been designed to. And you all know, you know, you guys out there that are watching this video, you need to have an office, you have to have a CAD, you have to have plotters, you have to have, you know, CAD operators that know what they're doing. You have to have certain details already in, um, in your system. And you may be using SharePoint to pull up files and details to put together a decent set of plans. But that's all things that happen within the office. But in terms of the, I'm going to call this the rough critical path schedule for building a house or a structure. And it's got 46 plus steps 
right to the engineering and county final frame approval and all of the inspections that go along that process. I have outlined it here, made it simple and straightforward for anybody that wants a copy. It goes right from, you know, you have your land, you have your approved plans. Now you want to, and you have your company, by the way, you have a construction company. And now a construction company doesn't need CAD operators, you know, unless you, well, you might have one or two uh, for as built once it's complete. You want to send those as built into um, the city, the county, whoever requires them for closeout. Closeout is another big part of any construction project, which I have been on, which at the airport, it's a job in itself. You have to do 10 million different forms for every phase and step of the process that follows these uniform filing codes that you go by, which has different divisions, you know, which is for site work. Uh, framing divisions, you have steel divisions. So now you might say, you know, I'm a contractor. How do I know I'm going to make any money? Okay. How do I know that this is going to be a profitable endeavor? And first of all, when you receive that RFP, that proposal from a company, because all this other work has been done, all the legwork has been done. Now you are the guy that's going to go out there and put it together, okay? That means you were selected to do that. In order for you to get selected, you have to provide a proposal, okay? That proposal is based on an estimate, an estimate that is done on, um, well, you can do it several different ways, but probably the very best way to do any estimate is by uh, using the um, uh, construction means estimate and um, I will tell you right now means is user friendly there are several different ways of uh, doing the estimate there are means for facilities there are means for um, just regular uh, cost indexes and construction uh, for and you you can you can get means for for uh, you know structure construction only construction means is a book that has everything in it from A to Z with um, material installation costs totals then you have different cities and uh, indexes for different cities how much uh, of the uh, you know national average it would be it could be 99% it could be 56% so you can adjust your estimate based on your area uh, where you live this is the most comprehensive uh, method that I have ever seen of pro providing a proposal to a company maybe it's the city that wants to do the work you need to get hired you need to get work on your plate. It, without that work, you can't make a living, okay? So you have to provide a proposal that makes you enough money to, you know, to make a profit, but you, your, your proposal has to be low enough that it gets approved and you get chosen. You know, it's not exuberant. You're not exceeding other bidders, okay? Because the minute you you know exceed other bidders, they throw you to the side. They want the lowest bidder. Okay, so your construction means is your best friend in uh, coming up with a number, um, and it's pretty simple. You just take whatever material it is under whatever division, and this one here it's structural steel. Okay, structural projects, and let's say for example you have a three to six story building, right? Uh, right here it tells you that for a three to six story building your daily output it could be 14.2 labor hours is 9.0 and you say well gee what does that all mean well you put it together on a spreadsheet and you get yourself a nice estimate that comprises of everything that has to go on that job from cradle to grave so that you have put yourself 
a decent um, amount of, you know, a decent amount of um, estimation for and, and a certain amount, you know, depends on, on the year too, because if, if your book is three years old, you're going to have to add those percentages, 3% per year to your estimate, and that could make it excessive, and then you won't get the project. But there's all kinds of things though, that there, if there was acceleration paid, uh, or should be, will be paid for contract work only, um, uh, and then uh, changes that are not maybe paid on overtime, there's changes not being paid on overtime, uh, funding, and uh, where, where is this funding coming from? Do they tell you that when you know they give you that re request for proposal? Um, and uh, was it a critical path item? You know that's based on schedule. You know is it something that affected the schedule overall? That's what critical path means. Uh, what value does this item bring to the project? Okay, um, uh, where, who, when, and how much? These are the big W's that I come up with. Uh, where, when, who, how much, and um, what are the changes? What's the cost? I mean, that's, I guess it's how much. But uh, quantities at locations, building rate, uh, what are the, are the charges the same? Is there a credit going to be applied? These, um, you know, have, are, are there shops? Are there going to be shops that have to be sent in? Um, do all invoices need backup, freights for delivery? I mean, we're talking about a ton of stuff that gets pulled out of this um, construction means that you can put together on a spreadsheet and and come up with a really pretty good estimate, okay? And then you have your city cost indexes that allows you to do a quick uh, multiplication. Um, you know, you got your plumbing right here, uh, division five, as you can see right there. Actually, it's division 22, uh, section zero five. So your plumbing hangers and plumbing HVAC pipe, it's on division 22 under your construction means. So now you have a nice, concise estimate that you are about to send to um, the owner, the person that's requested you for that proposal, and you are about to give them um, an estimate to do this work, okay? And here are the steps to do a, const a construction on a home, one through 26. And I'll make this as simple as possible and quick as possible. And this is one video that when you get this kind of information from me, you cannot go wrong. You will make money in real estate, in building homes as a home builder. Um, you need this kind of information out to your employees, your project managers, your superintendents. They need this right here that I came up with in my 35 years of engineering that will make you a profit and be very expeditious about it, okay? I was building over 25 homes a month with one of the local home builders, so I kind of know the game in this area. So here's the activities and there's the durations. For staking out a home, you put up a T-pole, you already have the survey, the lots have already been split up. Like I said, you have your site plan. It's already on here. You know exactly where you're at. You're going to have a T-pole. You're going to have a little box with these plans in that box for your project manager and superintendent and your, your um, inspectors to go to and sign off on whatever inspection they did that day. So you'll stake out the lot, which has been done. You set your T-pole. T-pole is just your temporary power, your meter, that will allow people to plug into and run power, power tools, okay? You order your footer pack, package. You order your footer concrete, okay? You order your uh, sills, sliding glass doors. These are long lead items and your immediate items all being ordered. This is number one, by the way. You order your stem wall block, bam, that's number one, okay? Number two, um, you build the pad and scrape the lot. So somebody comes out with a dozer, a backhoe, and scrapes the lot, okay? Um, you, they dig a footer for you, depth and width, it's all on these plans right here, okay? And that should take no more than a day, all right? That's the duration. 
Then you call for your first inspection, your city inspection. You call them up. Say, I'd like an inspection at this site, this lot, on this day. Please send someone out to inspect it. Out comes the inspector. You have a checklist. The checklist tells you how deep, how much the rebar, how, you know, everything like that, and how wide. And um, your inspector approves it or disapproves it. He may make some notes on your on your plants and tell you what you need to do. So then you pour your footer, you order your slab package, okay? Order your slab concrete, order walls, precast and steel, order foundation survey. So there's gonna be a survey done on the foundation, okay? Build the stem wall, that's your, your perimeter of the building. Uh, backfill the stem wall, this should take no more than one day a piece. Uh, plumbing rough in, and bam, you got pipes sticking out of the ground, bare ground, because now the concrete's gonna go around those pipes. You got all the plumbing coming in from the city, from underground sewer, water, everything, and these pipes are sticking out, okay? And then they do a, a rough in sewer tap inspection to make sure you have enough head on the plumbing to see if you have, you know, water, available for the for the for the residents and for sewer uh, you prep the slab you inspect the slab so that's your second inspection actually your third because your rough-in inspection uh, sewer tap inspection comes in second then your uh, in your third inspection is your uh, slab inspection you pour the slab around your rough-in order the lintel concrete order lintel pump so people come in and they pump the lintel this is your concrete on top of your lintel, order the exterior doors, order frame package and stairs, um, order marble tub, if it's a marble tub, um, long lead items, build the block wall. Now you've got masons out there putting up the blocks, okay? Now once that, you prep the slab, well we did all that already, but order the, uh, okay, build the block wall, I'm sorry about the uh, small confusion, and then you inspect the lintel. Lintel inspection is your number one, two, three, four inspections because they poured the lintel. The lintels actually get these these bolts because they're going to go ahead and you know probably screw in boards, and uh, that's where your framing is going to go up. You know for your second story or even just for your roof. So that's your lintel inspection. Lay, lay out lintel, pour lintel, lintel grade, frame walls, trusses and deck, and then you have a sheeting inspection. Okay. And if you have a pool, you start the pool right about the same time. You dry in the roof, tie back the walls. Tie back is that material that you see all the time where it's, it's a uh, waterproofer. Frame metal walls. Now framing the metal walls could take a couple of days, not, not one day. Install your windows, order shingles. Now mind you, you have already subs, trades that are doing, you call them, they show up. Hopefully they're dependable, they're not too busy for you and they're working with you and then you have a program that pays them once you get the delivery for the materials the the, the work has been accomplished you send out a notice of you know um, they send you a bill you send them back a a response with uh, with payment that goes through accounting gets approved everything has been blessed then you dry in the roof tie back the walls frame the metal walls install windows now for the windows installation you wait because you're bringing all the material for the second floor for your for your um, for your framing and also for your drywall through the windows the rough roughed out windows they're big enough at this time to get materials so you'll have like a crane a cherry picker loading that those um, loading those um, you know whatever materials they are for the second floor that you're gonna need flooring walls lighting anything right through the windows okay so uh, you install your windows, you order your shingles, HVAC rough-in comes in at this point where you have your condenser outside, you have all of your duct running, you have all of the diffusers, uh, so you, know, you can still see the, see the ceiling at this point. And you install your exterior doors. And you go to truss engineering and drying inspections, that's another inspection. You set your tub, you install your shingles, roof shingles, um, you do an electric rough in, all the electrical gets looked at, the walls haven't been put in yet completely. Your low voltage and alarm rough in, engineering and county final framing inspection. So yeah, you call up for all your inspections, 
This little list right here tells you exactly, exactly what to do, excuse me, for each process and the durations that it should take you, and that's all there is to it. You build your own house. Now, that's residential, construction, engineering. And I have tons more to show you on commercial, airport, um, environmental, uh, water and wastewater, just about anything you need, you can get on this channel, the engineering channel from John. Thank you.